Behind the Shades. Glenn Sanderfer, I currently serve as an executive within the security industry, but I've also written a book, a book around 20 years of experience in the similarities between relationship success or poor relationship outcomes and business. Uh, I am available at themiddlegroundbook.com, our website, and on The Middle Ground Book on Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, and Middle Ground Book on Instagram. Perfect. So take us through the genesis of this. How did you get started discussing relationships and helping others find what it is that they're looking for? By accident. By accident. I was not interested by any means in discussing relationships, writing a book around relationships, providing coaching for it. Uh, but uh, the genesis of it really began around 15 years ago. 15 years ago, I had my first uh, role as a leader within a sales and marketing organization. And in that organization, I found that individuals that had great success professionally were struggling with their relationships. And those that wanted great relationship outcomes did not know how to get them. So I began writing blogs and articles on the early stages of Facebook, early stages. I had a WordPress site uh, just to get my ideas and thoughts out there. Fast forward, I uh, went through a really bad, really tough divorce. Um, and from that, I spent two years in counseling. From the two years of that counseling, that's where I determined that the relationship outcome was my fault and I need to do a better job in order to be the best man that I could be for uh, my next and my final spouse. So in those two years, I determined kind of the framework for the middle ground. And I learned that the relationship outcome was completely my fault. It was within my control. And I ignored some things within me and within that other person that led to the poor outcome. So I now state that at the middle ground, anyone is in control and can get the great relationship outcomes that they're seeking. All they have to do is know who they are, know what they want, know who they qualify for and with whom they qualify for, know what they want from you. I would say that takes courage, Glenn, because I went through a similar, um, I don't want to say revelation, but I did some self-reflection and I began to understand that there are certain areas in my life that I was lacking. And for me to admit to myself that was a very humbling experience because from the outside looking in, a lot of people thought that, Terrain, you're a great catch, you're a nice guy, you're this and you're that. But nice guys have flaws. Mm -hmm. We do. Yep. Right. Nice clients have fall. And, and a lot of the flaws come just over time. They're learned behaviors, intentional or unintentional. And it's still your job as a nice guy to be the best version of yourself to get the relationship outcome you want. So when you were going through the therapy and you came to this realization that, hey, a lot of this is on my shoulders. I had to be a better man. But before I become a better man, I had to be a better person. Um, and you identify what went wrong and your contribution mm -hmm. to that. When you're working with people to figure that out for themselves, what are some of the commonalities that are preventing them from having that type of um, self-realization in their journey? Ego and delusion. So I was at the point where ego and delusion would not allow me to accept responsibility for the breakdown in that marriage and thus the breakdown in my dating outcomes. Ego from the standpoint of saying, it can't be me. I am great, I'm a great catch, I have great education, I'm in great shape, I look okay, I think I look all right. Um, and people love being around me. Delusion, saying that I deserve, which is the worst phrase any person can say, this type of outcome from this person, and if only she or he uh, would make these changes, everything would be great. So in my sessions, things that sessions and then the lead up to um, this book, which was a series of interviews that kind of formed uh, this ideology, those were the two things that limited people from acknowledging that they were the problem in their dating outcome. So it was not as simple as, you know what, Glenn, my name is Terrain. Mm -hmm. I am the table, so I have to bring anything oh, to the table. Toxic, right? baby. Toxic. <laughs> But you hear that 
quite a bit where it's like, okay, this is what I have. Let me give you, I'll break it down. One thing that I heard from someone. I'm in my 30s. I'm above average in looks. This is what's conveying. And I have this type of job and I drive this kind of a car. And this is my education. But to get someone to understand that saying that, hey, that is not in, that may not be enough for the type of person you're looking for. How do you have that conversation where you're trying to get them to understand one, what it is that they're looking for and two, how to attract what they're actually looking for? Well, the first thing that I say is congratulations, you're an adult. So you have a car, you're paying for it, you pay the insurance. I hope, God, I hope because you guys can't drive. Um, uh, You have your own place, you have a great job and you have your education. Man or woman, you are now an official adult. So you are doing, you are doing a great, you're doing a great job as an adult uh, doing the work that it needs to be considered an adult in life. Um, The second piece is with that, let's move past those things as the table. The table has nothing to do with you. I talk about, I have two books, part one and part two of the middle ground, how to get great dating outcomes in a modern world. In part two, I talk about this terminology. I am the table. As I promoted part one, that is all I heard. Over 100 podcasts, 100 interviews, I heard I am the table and I am the table for a number of reasons. You are not the table. The relationship is the table. You have to bring something to the relationship of value. And one of the illustrations that I use is Thanksgiving. Everyone here has attended Thanksgiving. I don't think that's toxic or taboo yet, but everyone here has attended attended a Thanksgiving dinner. Who gets the worst look? The person who comes to Thanksgiving empty-handed. You need to stop and get cups, plates, forks, knives, napkins, drinks, soda, or pop, depending on where you live, and you got to bring something. If you don't, you're going to hear it from mom and dad, you're going to hear it from grandma and grandpa, auntie and uncle, cousin, sister, brother, and all of their friends. But the reality is everybody else for Thanksgiving contributed to an amazing meal and an amazing memory. And what we have to do is move past the material as the source of creating the table and looking at the relationship as the table. And the relationship takes the understanding that it's not about you and it's going to take sacrifice and investment to get the outcome you want. Sitting in a group of people, you and I, we discussed this earlier where I'm a part of two group chats, one that's mostly male and one that is mostly female. Mm -hmm. And their complaints about the opposite sex are very similar in nature. And sometimes I look at them and I'm like, you guys are this, you guys are just different sides of the same coin. Mm -hmm. It's a very gendered argument. He's not this. He's not that. She Mm -hmm. won't do this. She Mm -hmm. won't do that. And it brought me to a conversation that I once had with someone who was looking to find love and, and she was finding it in all the wrong places. And I simply went to her, I was like, what is it that you want? And what is it that you bring to the relationship that you would have? And she turned to me and she said, Terrain, no one has ever asked me that question. I was like, okay, let's reverse it. When you go for a job and you're looking for a job, you research the job, right? You look at, okay, this is the salary, this is the benefit. This is how I could fit in because this is what I can bring to the job. And this is what the job is going to bring to me as compensation or as a reward. And she was able to tune into that analogy. And I think many of us seem to forget, as you mentioned, the Thanksgiving comparison. If you show up with your hand empty, people are going to look at you kind of funny because you're supposed to bring something. Now, if you're going to show up to Thanksgiving dinner and say, you know what, baby, I am the table. I'm going to eat before everyone else. Mm -hmm. I'm going to kick my feet up and you're going to serve me. You're going to be on your backside out that front door because no one's going to tolerate that. And I think sometimes we are starting to not love each other in the way that we want to love each other. We're starting to tolerate each other. And worse, we're not even having these types of conversations. So what would you want to see change maybe in the relationships going forward between um, two people who want to get into that type of situation? I would say the number one thing that people need to understand is that the relationship is not about just serving you. It's about coming to serve. If you look at the relationship, ladies, he needs to be six foot, make six figures, have a six pack, 
have six times two in lean. If he needs to do all of that just to qualify, the question that you need to ask yourself is who am I and what do I bring to him? Because you named everything physical and provision. What are you bringing to the table that matches physical and provision? Um, so I say, come to it saying, hey, I met this great guy. He does all this, like you talked about a job. He has a great career. He's working really well. He's in the community. He's known. He has a little bit of stature. And I would really like to get to know him. If I were to get to know him, what would he want from me? That is a totally different shift than saying, I am all these things and he needs to want me. Men, if you are out here and you meet a woman and a woman is, what's the, the median height? Five, five, six, 138, uh, great. She's got body goals. She's a girl boss, baddie or a diva. Pick your pick your favorite uh, term. And she has a lot going on for her and she has great relationships with the people around her. What is she looking for? And if you're able to articulate what she's looking for, then you can start to go into that relationship dynamic with that service, that servant mindset in, in mind. But right now, the number one thing we need to do is we got to stop going into relationships seeing what is what's in it for me. We have to be able to say, what can I give? Because the reality is most people are not emotionally stable enough, financially stable enough, spiritually stable enough to be successful in a relationship. So you have to be willing to acknowledge that so you can get, get the help, work on it, and then get back into the relationship pool uh, so you can uh, get the outcome you deserve.